Hi everybody, this is Ken from CAD Image, and in this session I'm going to look at an introduction to CAD Image Stairs. CAD Image Stairs are one of the part of set of tools that we offer for ARCHICAD 18. To begin using the stairs, the first thing we do is pick from this dialog of preset shapes to work with our oh weight, sorry, wrong product. We don't do anything like that. We don't have any sort of preset shapes to work with. We don't prescribe how you begin. So what we actually have is a set of construction types that you can work with. So we have three types. We have a solid stair, we have a floating stair, and we have stairs that are based on stringers. So what that means is we have a range available, different types of stringers, a couple of different types of floating stairs, and then a solid stair. Translating in 3D, we have this sort of thing here where you can see we have a central spine for the stringer. We have the treads located on the stringers. We have cut strings, solid strings, a couple of different types of floating options with and without the, the plate at the back, and also the solid stair at the end here. So this gives us a pretty good range to work with when you consider you can set all the properties, the surfaces, and then obviously all the things like the railings and the bits and pieces that go around about the stairs later on. So our stair design, the way we start here, is with literally a blank canvas. There is no preset. So we just begin and draw the shape to what we require. So what I'll do is I'm going to go to our stair tool in the toolbox. We have the standard ARCHICAD stairs. We then have our CAD image poly stair. And we also have CAD image railings that go hand in hand with the poly stair tool. So in the settings, the first thing we do is pick, do we want a solid, a floating, or stringer based stair? So let's go with a floating stair because I always like things that appear to hang on skyhooks. And I'll just begin a couple of basic settings. So I'm going to set this on the ground floor. We're going to set the alignment to be the right hand edge. Well, then I'm going to come down here and just a couple of basics. So overall floor to floor, 2.8, and we'll make this 900. So fairly average residential UK type sizes. Obviously there are all the settings behind here for things like the surfaces, the pens, there's some help um, links here. We also have options for flights and landings and how the geometry behaves etc etc and we have a ton of options for the symbols but I'm not going to go through all of those in nitty gritty detail right now so just a quick check 2.8900 ground floor let's show on home in one story up and that's us ready to go. So in terms of drawing we start wherever we need to start. So let's just start here. First of all, take a look at this stair placement menu that appears, because this is where we choose what we're about to draw. So we're working with a straight edge. Is it going to be curved using different either tangents, arcs, three point arcs, etc.? And at the end here, am I drawing a flight or am I drawing a landing? So I'm going to begin with just a regular straight flight. And all we do is we point and we click, and that's the first one done. To move on, standard ARCHICAD rules sort of apply, wherever you click, it drops in the stair. I'm going to have some weird shapes here, but all I wanted to do was show, again, standard ARCHICAD elements. If I hit backspace, and again, and again, this takes me back to where it actually started. So, usual sort of things apply here. Maybe what I'll do at this point is switch to drawing a landing. I know that the stair is 900 wide, so let's make the landing 1000 deep by 1000 wide. We can then go back to straight run. Maybe we have a curve actually. Let's just pull this round here. Then maybe I'll go back onto straight run from that point. And to finish, all I do is click on the last point a second time. Again, standard sort of ARCHICAD rules. If I was to press escape, I would lose everything of this wonderful design that I've come up with so far. So I'm just going to click here and it closes and finishes the stair for me. You can see it creates a shape, there is a cut line, um, there's some numbering, there's some dashed lines, some solid lines, a couple of things with these hotspots here, we can do little things like either change the rotation of that cut, or what we can do is pick it up and just move it along. So maybe we'll have it on the landing here somewhere. Pull it around slightly. This is the ground floor representation, if I go up, then what you'll see is we have a completely independent control of that cut line on the first floor. So we can actually pull this back. And if I go into the settings, then what we can actually do is 
look at the symbol options here, and we can control things like what the brake line appears as. Right now, everything's set for model view options, which is a good way to do it because it means you have consistency across your project if you have a number of different staircases involved with it. But I'm going to break them on rules and just go and change. And let's make this a double break. We'll maybe do things like have 100mm overhang on the ends. We will look at the structure. So the structure right now, again, is set for model view options, but what we can do is choose, do we want the treads beyond the brake line? Do we want just the outline? Do we want the treads to stop? So let's just go for beyond. Uh, we can look at the rise arrow. So we can turn it off completely. We can have arrow to the whole stair, or maybe we break it at the brake line. And then there's further options here. We can either have continuous, or we can set the arrow in individual flights. Again, there's more and more options here to change the styles of the arrowhead and the sizes, etc. So I'm not going to get through all of that, but just give you a taster. Rise and numbers, you can choose. Let's just number them all. And what we can also do is actually choose this option to switch on a head clearance plane. Now, what that means is if I click OK, changes based on the, the random things I sort of clicked at because I wasn't paying too much attention. But if we go back down, we should see the numbers disappear at the brake line and we're just seeing an outline from there upwards. The head clearance plane, if I just select this stair and we have a look at it at all its glory in 3D, then what you'll see is this actually creates and builds a glass surface that sweeps up with the stair so that as we're working with surrounding geometry, we can check and make sure we have head clear and some people aren't going to knock themselves unconscious on the way down the stairs in the morning. So we can switch all these things on and off. The other thing, if I go back in to the settings, is we have these couple of different graphic editing options. So if I take a quick look at those, I'll switch the first one on. This is the flights and landings. And what it does is activate a whole load of extra hotspots on various key points here. So if I just grab this one, for example, and stretch it outwards, then what I'm doing is actually changing the width of the end of this first run. And in doing so, changing the, the size of the landing. I can maybe pull this out. Maybe pull that one out. We could take the ends and we could stretch those. The other thing I could actually do is use these middle points to actually change the bend. So I can completely change the shape we're working with here. And at the end of the day, somebody else can worry about whether or not it's buildable. But you can see we can change and play with these shapes here. Other thing I can do is switch on the tread editing. And what this allows me to do is actually go and curve Maybe this bottom run. Maybe curve the top run. So we don't quite see it there because I've turned everything off, but if we look at 3D, you can see we now have curves as it increases up across this part of the landing here. So back in 2D, the final thing there is just the ability to actually add curves on the end of the treads if we want to have that sort of work of magnificence in here. Quite a nice thing to point out is you will see if you look at this, the surfaces a lot have created some really bizarre shapes here. The surfaces do try to follow the treads, and if they're regular perpendicular treads, they will look pretty near perfect as it goes across up the flight. So that's fine for playtime, but let's go and take a look at a real example. So I've got a little bit of a building here. I've put some hot spots in just to snap to speed the whole thing up, but what that allows you to do is just see a, a more practical example. So I've got a ground floor, first floor, let's just do a quick measure. So that's 900 wide. And I've also got a 3D view that I can look at, which right now is a little bit bare. So let's come back to the ground floor. We'll go into our settings. We'll have a solid stair this time. Uh, it's ground floor based, it's 2800. It's 900 wide. I'm going to align it to the right hand side. So we'll do is start with just one tread, we'll switch to a landing, bring that around to here, switch back to another straight run up to here, and this time what I'm going to do is come up and actually continue with a straight run, but what that'll do by turning it 90 degrees like this, some kites to give me a wind up. So I'm going to close that off, I've got the shape, let's just move that. And you can see what I'm left with. If we go to the floor above, again you can see the outline, and if we have a look at 3D, 
you can see how the stair fits into the opening. If I take a look at another example, I've already got the stair in place here, but one of the things we need to be able to do is put a railing on here because right now this is just downright dangerous. You can either fall off the landing or you can fall off the stair on the way up or down it. So obviously we don't want that. We'll go back to the ground floor and what I can do with it is put a railing on the stair itself and then we'll look at how we control the landing on the floor above. So to begin with, I'm going to select the stair and we have an option within the stair setting within the camera image menu to place railings. What that does is open the regular dialog and I can choose from one of these four cat image railing types. So I'm going to go with cat image horizontal rails. Depending on the one you choose, you're going to have different options available in here because obviously the geometry is different for each one. So let's go back to the horizontal rails, put this on the ground floor, and there's a whole load of options we can go through, uh, including things like what shape is the railing at the beginning. Um, what shape is the handrail? So I'm just going to quickly add a few of these options in here. The new posts, let's make them rectangular in section. You can change all the sizes and the surfaces and the usual bits and pieces you expect. Posts, the rails, these are round, let's make them 20 by 20. We can have a look at a preview to get an idea of what's going on with it. There are four of them, let's change that to six. And then we have options for the symbol. Again, this can be controlled with model view options, which is always a good idea. So all I'm going to do is hit the OK button. What then happens is you'll see that the screen actually zooms to the stair that's selected, because what that allows me to do is pick, do I want to put the railings on one side? So you can see the bold on the inside or outside, depending on your perspective. We can put it on the other side. If we put it in the middle, we can put it on both. So I actually only want to put it on this lower part here. So I'm just going to click down here and off it goes and it creates, you can see the volume, you can't really miss what's going on here, but it goes and creates the railing. So when we go to 3D, we can see a shape as it builds up. So obviously that fixes the stair, but we still have an issue with the landing up on top here. What I'm going to do is go back to the first floor. And to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm actually going to just change the shape completely. So we'll take this and maybe what we'll do is we'll just cut out a bit of a rectangular shape there just because I can. And to make it worse, let's go and add a curve onto that part of it. So that's the shape of my upper floor landing. I'm going to go back in here. We'll take a different type of panel. We'll go for a solid one this time. Uh, I could go through and set all the settings, but all I'm going to do is hit OK. And I'm just going to drop one of these down. So just randomly here, because what I need to do next is go and position it. So let's rotate it around. And we'll actually take it and we'll place it over here. Now that might look a bit odd because obviously it still doesn't fit. But what I can do is now use these graphic editing modes. So I'm going to use this first one. And this allows me to pick up this end and just stretch the whole railing so it comes across and meets over here. So in 3D, we have this sort of thing going on. Obviously, there's still a little danger area. We're now going to fix that. So back in 2D, I'm still in shape editing modes. And what I'm going to do is use this point in the middle and just drag the same again, drag one there. And what that's done is create a break at this point, a break at this point, and then I can carry on round. So we'll put a point there, we'll put a point there, we'll quickly drop back into the settings, switch now to creating curves, hit OK, grab this, pull that down, snap it onto there, and what we've got now is the railing shaped around the shape to match the landing. So I can trace geometry with it, depending on what we need, it's quite easy to do. Other thing we can do if we select it in 3D is pick up this end and you'll see that I've actually got the ability to angle it and snap it onto stairs or ramps or bits of roof, whatever it happens to be. You can see I've got that option to do that sort of thing with it there. So there's a ton of control with it. Final thing I can do is drop back in and look at editing the components, the newels within the railing itself. So you can see now I've got a symbol view of them. 
And what it could actually do is take this and just bring it round and align it to the middle. We have one across here which is kind of in a silly place. So again, we take that and we can pull that along and position that in the middle as well. Other thing we can do with it is actually remove it completely. So again, if I look at 3D, you can see that post has disappeared. This one's now in the middle. We've got tons of controls with it to create the stairs and create the railings as we actually require them. So that gives you a little bit of an introduction to Caribbean stairs. I'd like to just say thanks for taking the time to watch. And if you'd like more information, you can visit either the main website, caribbean.com, and for some of the other components, the objects and downloads, you can take a look at mycaribbean.com. Thanks for your time.